work spouses but not the type that you're thinking of we realize you spend more time with people at work than you do with the people you love most we're going to discuss the interactions such as the games played at work building the right and avoiding the wrong relationships D'Angelo and I, we're currently work spouses. Join us each week as we testify, help, and complain about work in corporate America. Welcome back and happy Halloween. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, it's Halloween. Yes. All right, so let's get started with our cocktail. So our cocktail of the day was supposed to be a lemon drop. Okay. But I forgot the lemons. <laughs> so it's just a drop. So I, <laughs> so I had to improvise. Okay. And it's ginger beer. Okay. Gin. Triple sec. And a little bit of simple syrup. Okay. And because, and in honor of Halloween, I have some dry ice here oh, for us. Smoking already. Yeah. Well, that's what it's supposed oh, to do. It's almost, almost stuck to the table too. Yeah. Okay, okay. So hey, let's oh, let's cold. start to pour it now. Okay. Yeah. Let's lift your. Okay. So we can frozen. see. See. Oh, okay. Now you get on it. Is bu- that's bu- it's bu- it's bubble it's up on my hand. Yes, that's exactly what it's supposed to do. Okay. So when are you I supposed to drink see, it? I can't see though. Yeah. You can drink it now. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that going on in my stomach. <laughs> That's not going on in your <laughs> stomach. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let's cheers. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. And also, you celebrated a birthday this week. Yes, I did. So happy birthday, David. Thank you. Thank cheers. you. Cheers. Oh, Ooh. look. <laughs> oh, oh, that's nice. <laughs> 18 with 19 years of experience. <laughs> You're 18 with 19 yeah, years yeah, of experience. That's, that's, that's cool. Yeah. You drank some? Go ahead. <laughs> Did you drink some? I, I tasted it. So I didn't see you taste it. Let's do it again. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me see you. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> mm, tasty. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm choking. <laughs> <laughs> Where Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Try oh. it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I put too much dry ice inside <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, Wait, yeah. we need more alcohol. Uh, yeah, this is like a <laughs> chem- chemistry experiment. <laughs> okay, so let's try. It. Okay, I can't see it, so because uh, all the dry ice that okay. I put in here. <laughs> see, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> David. Okay, I don't okay, want right. to hear your mouth. All right, we need a straw. <laughs> 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 It's strong. It's strong. It's your birthday drink. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna Let's try it again. The, mm, yes, it is strong, but it's good. It's good. The dry ice is supposed to give the effect. I feel like I got a facial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like kicking back on you. So it's like it's going in. You're, and you're inhaling, inhaling it. Yeah. Right. So that's what makes it. A, <laughs> it's like a double whammy. So here's the start okay, to a let's, new birthday. Let's, let's try it again. It came out of your nose. Yeah. Like a dragon. Okay. okay. Let's move on. Yeah. yeah but that's... here's, I try to make this, you know, so Halloween-y. The, so, so what is the trick to making well, that's, that's the word. <laughs> uh, a drink with dry ice? Is there a trick No, you don't. It? See, the dry ice, the last component, is just to give it this, you know, like boiling effect of, you know, looking like you're preparing a concoction, like a proportion, right. a yeah. potion or something, yeah, like what... Halloween-like. Okay. Okay. So that's all the dry ice does, but it's not really any flavor to it or anything. No, yeah, yeah, no, I didn't think it. And if you can hear flavor, it, like you can like, hear. Is there a, a way where it could go bad on you? Like you can make the, a drink with dry ice and it could just go bad? No, not really, because the the dry ice doesn't do anything but make it just bubble. It's not going to okay. give any flavor or anything. It's not going to make the glass explode or nothing like that. Um, I don't if I don't know actually. <laughs> right. I don't hey, know the, the cautionary the, things. Hey, can you see how? Cool, yeah. The glass is well, getting. yeah, that's because of the dry ice was sitting in it. Right. But so is dry ice should it be served better in a mug or no? No. Glass I've seen in the martini glasses. Okay. Yeah. So you, you put you in anything. Get, you probably just put a little bit too much. Yeah, I did this because I wanted to last because yeah. dry ice will fizzle out really quickly. Let it. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, let's get okay. into today's topics. Yeah, yeah you should. Um, you should have <laughs> brought more in so everybody else could experience this. Uh, <laughs> Well, I have more ice. I just need some <laughs> cups. So if you guys want some, I definitely will make you some so you can try out this situation. 
All right, so we're back with Work Spouse, and you know with the Work Spouse, we like to talk about relationships <laughs> in the office as well as relationships at home. And last week episode, we got into a little conversation on our way out the door, and we got into some conversation with people who were coming in to do the next radio station. It seems like that topic was kind of a hot button. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> What yeah. topic? Whatever are so, you talking yeah, so about, the topic David? Was, Do explain. Okay, so we're kind of doing like a continuation from the question was, so if your date is going sour, mm -hmm. okay. okay, are you going to run up the tab? So you go out on a date with somebody, it's a bl oh, blind Maybe. date, or it could be a first date, whatever, <laughs> but it's your first time meeting them, then you check it out the chemistry, but then it starts going sour. So it could go sour just because it's not good chemistry, or they could have done something to offend you, uh, says something to offend you or something like that, or you're just not feeling each other. How do you handle the rest of the date? If you know after this date, I'm not going to see you again, because women know in their head after this date, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to see you again. So, are you thinking about preserving his dollars? Are you thinking about, hey, if he's a jerk, maybe oh, I'm going to run up, run up the tab. So, what is your thoughts about it? Well. It really depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. I can't say that I can count as many times, you know, on my hand, how many times I made, you know, went up the, made the bill run up just because they got on my nerves. Okay. If anything, I dismissed myself quickly. And I've had some pretty horrible dates. Like okay. horrible dates. I mean. <laughs> Have you had any like recent horrible dates? And like the most the recent, <laughs> the most recent date I had, the guy showed up drunk. Oh. So he was wasted. Like drunk, like slurring drunk, drunk. his words. Oh, like he was slurring. Slow. He's reeked of alcohol. Uh. Like, so I met him at this, like, local bar in my neighborhood, and he was already there. So I, I, I know you can hear the <laughs> yeah, bubbling. Yeah, go ahead. I love it. So um, he was already there. He was already, he had already arrived. I arrived a few. So what happened was, let me set the entire st stage for you. Okay. And quickly, I'm going to make this story quickly. Make it quick. So I was going to another friend's birthday party the same night. So, and he was already out. He told me he was always out with his boys. Mm -hmm. Like they went to some cigar lounge and was having like a couple of drinks. Of course, I didn't think that meant, you know, right. infinity amount right. of <laughs> drinks, an infinite amount of drinks. So I was like, okay, we can meet up at this place, you know, really quickly. Cause it was the party that I was going to was like maybe like three, four hours after we were supposed to meet up. Okay. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to get dressed, go and meet up with him. You know, if not, I'll head to the party early. It's not a big deal. Okay. So I met up with him um, at this local bar and he was already, so he already got there before he arrived before I did. And after arriving one, he didn't look like his picture. Okay. So he had like, he had a cap on and he had glasses on, but none of his pictures Online. This was from an online profile. So online prof okay. He profile, okay. He looked. He didn't look like any of his pictures. So like, what? What do you mean? Like we said, and he like, just looked. He just. He just looked totally different. Like the pictures were more like forward and. Did they face. seem like old? Did they just get one shot? It was like, yeah, one, yeah, it was like, one shot. Like my, like my, it was like, like, like <laughs> yeah. you see the short arm or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> right. It was. Right. It okay. was not. It, it. It. It was not himself. Let's put it like that. Okay. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm just going to bro with it, you know, carry on. But then when I walked up and I was like, you know, such and such, like I said, his name, mm -hmm. he was like, yeah. Then he came over and hugged me and I was like, oh. Okay, hugging already. Okay. Yeah, he like, he came to embrace me and hug me. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay. And then he was, he said, I was like, oh, I said, you've been drinking? Because I smelled the you alcohol. Smelled on the hug, So right. I was like, oh, you've been drinking? He was like, yeah, I just had it. But by time, but when I walked up when i approached him he had a drink in his hand like a beer he had like a beer in his hand and he approached me with one arm and the beer had it was in the other hand okay so i was like oh, okay i was like oh you started without me you know like i made right. a little snarky comment like that and he was like yeah you know you took so long i was like i didn't take that long it wasn't that long i was like, late but i wasn't how late, late. okay that's, that's i was like less than 15 minutes late oh that's not oh yeah yeah probably not even okay. 10 minutes late because i right. lived around the corner all right okay yeah, so and not. i was i wanted him to get there before i did so that he wouldn't ghost me yeah, makes sense. Because I didn't want to have to go there by myself. I was like, this would have wasted my time. Okay. That's so I usually, I'm late on purpose, usually. Because I'm pretty prompt, but I'm late on purpose to make sure that. That there are. Yeah. Where they like, get yourself together. Because when I walk in, I'm making an interest. So before <laughs> you 
make the decision to leave the house, you check to make sure that he's actually there. Yeah, or en route, or, or en like, route. hey, okay. I'm on my way. Where are you? Blah, blah, okay. blah. So, okay, so he got there, and I was like, okay, this is this is cool. Great. When he smelled like alcohol, and like t- I said, oh, you've been drinking? He was like, yeah, I just came from Cigar Gap Lounge with my boys, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay, great. Whoa, how many drinks did you have? <laughs> so he was like, oh, just a few. I said, you sure? Just a few? So then that's kind of how to start the conversation. He was like, come on, let's sit down. And I was like, you want to sit at a table or at the bar? He was like, no, 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 we can sit at the bar. I was like, all right. It all didn't right, matter so to me. he just wanted to drink. Okay. Yeah. He wanted to drink, and I saw him get some food, too, because we end up ordering food. So we end up going to the bar, ordering food, whatever the case may be. And he was like, how are you doing? I was like, good. But as we started conversing, he was slurring his words. Okay. And that took me over, one. And two, it was just like, he was like leaning in. He was like leaning forward towards me and like bumping me a right. little bit and right because you guys sitting at the bar you guys are but we were we like were this. closer right, so close he was like course, right. he was closer to me and he just started to lean in and kept like bumping me but like in a drunk like okay not like coherent it, way gotcha, like it's like. Not, like, it's like a lean, like it's not just bumping you, it's leaning. Yeah, because he's like slurring right, and yeah. he's like not cognizant. You know, like right, when someone yeah, is like yeah. inebriated and they're like, oh, okay, yeah. and just keep knocking over stuff, but you don't recognize that you're doing these things. Gotcha. So it kind of made me uncomfortable because then I was like, all right, so I didn't want him to spill anything. And then he started even like almost when he was talking, when he was speaking, it was like almost like he was spitting, like he was oh, spit he was coming out of his mouth. Okay. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I was like, okay, so I tried to like, Say, okay. So how do you make like a quick exit for that type of day? Okay, so Okay, so let me tell you. I I couldn't make a quick exit because it led into like a lot more. So I was trying to like flow with it. So we ordered something. I think I ordered like one drink and he ordered like wings and I ordered like some Brussels sprouts. It was really something simple. Mm. And he was like, Yeah, he was like, You seem like you um he kept one he kept like poking at me a little bit too. He was like, You seem like you're uncomfortable. I said, Well, I think it's a little, you know, not a great first impression to come on a date. Okay. Drunk. Okay. You so know? So you kind of, well, that's a And he kept saying, I'm not Drake. I'm not, he's like, I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk. If he say, I'm not drunk, that would have been good. <laughs> I'm not drunk. I'm, I'm not, not drunk. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you oh, really yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. You are absolutely drunk. Yeah, yeah. Um, He was like, I'm not drunk. And I was like, you absolutely are. I was like, you're slurring. He's like, I'm not. You know how like someone mm-hmm. keep denying. Yeah. And I'm like, you're doing very, right. like, drunk actions. Right. You have a really upset. Yes. So then I kept, you know, I left that alone or whatever, and I was just talking to him. So when I talked to him, he kept asking me the same questions over again. So then I became annoyed because I'm like, I just answer it. Oh, okay. But I'm trying not to so be he's like. losing track of the conversation. Yeah, okay. right. So I'm like, I just answer that. I just answer that question. You know, in my head, I didn't say that. I was like, I'll say like, oh, you didn't remember? I just told you. You know, like I wouldn't say like, I just told you that I answered the question. I wasn't like that. So I was like, okay. So I just sat there. Then the food came. We ate. And he started eating like his wings and fries, and he was just like eating rudely, like chomping down on like. Like he's really hungry. I was like, oh like, my like god, a like a drunk person, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. a, like a drunk like college a student. Yeah. Like I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening to me. So that happened, and he was just like, you just seem like. So then you, he said, like, you ready to go? I guess he noticed that I was calling Uber because I was about to make my exit. <laughs> so I guess he noticed me. Right, yeah. Calling, yeah. Pulling up Uber on oh, my yeah, cell phone. Right. He was like, you ready to go? I said, yeah, I'm actually about to head out. He was like, oh, okay. So they got the check. So he said, check, please, you know, to the, the um, bartender. Right. And the check came. And he was like, well, he was like, you want, so the check came. He was like, you going to take care of this? I said, no, I will not. I said, the audacity of you to show up drunk and ask me to take care of the check. He was like, well, bitch. I was like, oh, okay. wait a minute. Hold up. Okay. I okay. got up immediately and walked out. Okay. I was like, excuse me? I said, okay. And I got up and walked out. So did you leave any money? I didn't leave a goddamn okay. thing. Okay. Are you, you kidding asking? Okay, okay. So <laughs> no, so did, absolutely not. So, okay, I got a few questions. Okay. So, <laughs> so when you guys were communicating before, it was all through the application of the dating or did he have your cell yes phone? and then he had my number, number because we corresponded via okay. text so when upon you, his arrival when you, so when you walked away and obviously you weren't happy with the date and he knew of that did he text you or say anything like or afterwards yeah no 
Okay, so did he? Did you have to like block him? Nothing, no more, more communication. Oh, I didn't block him. I just I. So what I did, I went on the app. Okay, did you rate? People I on did. The app? I oh, well, okay. I well, I I like unmatched him on the app, and okay. then I put in the comment as to like, and it was a comment section, and I said why I unmatched him. So I said he showed up on a date drunk. He called me like a okay. foul language. That's, like that's I did. No, I didn't know. So guys get well, guys and girls they get ratings. Well, no, it's app. not ratings, but oh. the app will ask you what why you issue? unmatching with this okay, person. So they'll ask you, did you all match? What is the connection? Are you done with the app? You know, like even right. if you get off the app, they're like, oh, did you meet someone? Like they'll ask questions. Okay, oh, they're trying the, to get da- uh, data. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So it asked me, and I was just like, this person showed up drunk. I told him, it was like a brief paragraph, like, this person showed up drunk. You know, he didn't really look like himself. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, I, so I, yeah. all those things that I explained to you, I kind of put in the app, like, quickly. And I was like, then he called me, you know. I put in the, in the app exactly mm-hmm. the word that he he called me. Yeah, so that's a that's a bad thing. So so <laughs> exactly, you think? <laughs> there, yeah, there's a few things I want to pull out of that story uh, that stood out to me. And it may make sense. It may be stupid or not. So, um, you knew that, like, some, why do women sometimes do this? Like, they know they have an event to go to, mm-hmm. and they kind of double book themselves. Is that like a protection? Like, if things go bad, would you lie and be like, yes. oh, my event is starting early? Yes, I and no. Go. Sometimes uh, it just happens that way because okay. of your schedule, and sometimes it's not on purpose. Okay. But I felt, I feel like it depends on the situation, meaning how far in advance did you ask me on this date. Okay. So what if the date was going good? Would you ever not do the event the second? No. Okay. It was something I was committed to. It was a friend's birthday. I'm going to celebrate her birthday okay. with her. Okay. So I was definitely going to do that. But it's just that we'll see each other another time. The date was right. good. That's a good sign. That's right. great chemistry. Right. We can carry right. on with another date. But I don't... That happened to work out perfectly because right. I had something else to go to. Right. <laughs> So then the other question, and this is just for my own curiosity. <laughs> okay, all the questions. <laughs> okay. I'm being so, interviewed here. <laughs> why did you order Brussels sprouts? Because I had planned to drink and eat later, and I had already ate. So I wasn't really hungry. And then we were sitting at the bar. Okay. So I'm not going to get like a huge plate. Of, I'm not going to get salmon, rice, and asparagus. And maybe, maybe I say that because Brussels sprouts give a lot of people gas. So I'm like, oh. maybe like. You were so turned off to him. Hey, when I, I'm gonna have these Brussels sprouts. I'm just gonna be farting on this whole day <laughs> because this is what I think of you. <laughs> that okay. wasn't that wasn't my okay, idea. I was like, like I didn't have the idea to do okay. that, but that would have been funny. I mean, I, I mean, could have I, I, I could have been just as rude. It's been dates where they were bad, and I was just as rude. Have, have you ever had to do anything like in a date date scenario to try to get turn the guy off? Yes, I've like, done that many a times. Actually, like, I've done that more oh, okay. times than I've actually had horrible dates. Hmm. So. Typically, so the the day before that that I had that was really horrible was this one guy and he we went to dinner like this Indian restaurant or something like that, and he kept bragging about himself, and he was like to the point where he was like all my exes has upgraded after me like I mean he was just going in and I was just like but one I don't care, two okay. what does that say about you yeah like yeah. <laughs> you know like he didn't he didn't get that drift or so I don't know what was going on so I just kept saying things that was just like. I was really just kind of like being really rude to his personality. I was like, well, if all of them left you and you're here dating, what does that yeah. say about mm. your dating life or you actually being a suitable partner? You know, right. so it was just like he just didn't like, I'm sure he didn't like the things that I was saying, but I just kept saying really rude things. So have you ever ran the tab up on on somebody because you um on a date? Because they were being obnoxious? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. If you're being obnoxious, then I'm definitely going to run the tab up on you. But if you're not being obnoxious and it's just a bad day, I'm just leaving. Like for instance, the the one that I told you about, my most recent one, I just le- I was just like I'm I'm leaving. Right. Okay. Because even though he he kind of aggr- you know addressed me drunk, I still was like, okay, well let me not totally discount him. Let me see how coherent he is. Right. To continue this date or how yeah. honest he'll be about the situation because I would think he would be more apologetic. Yeah, yeah. I think people he was like, apologize, hey, he know, felt entitled. I, I went beyond my <laughs> limits and yeah. I, I really don't want this to be my first impression. You know, I can understand if you want to reschedule or, you know, or just bear with me. No, he was very right. entitled. Like, I should have accepted him showing up on the first date drunk, completely intoxicated. Okay, okay. I mean, so yeah. then maybe, okay, <clears throat> so I have a question for you question for me i don't know how long you may be able to pull out these historic data yeah, yeah, it's historic. of dating <laughs> I, I, i've been off that mo- 
But have you ever stopped dating someone for something that was minuscule or very like silly or just a part of your quirk? Like if you didn't like someone who chew loud or I don't know what it could be, but whatever. Have you ever stopped dating or just decided not to continue a date or talk to anyone, call them anymore? Because it was a quirk. Uh, this I mean, could be kind of, uh, well, I don't know if I want to say that one. No, tell me. <laughs> no, I want to hear it. You have to tell me now. You can't do that. Yeah, this, this is going to be kind of bad. Hopefully I don't get in trouble at home. Uh, <laughs> we're going to, yeah, disclaimer, <laughs> yeah. we're going to block this part. Now, I, I, I remember you know, years ago, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, pre-wife and everything, I remember dating someone and after engaging in that act, mm -hmm. I broke it off because I didn't like the sounds that were being made. <laughs> It, 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 didn't, it didn't sit well in my spirit. Yeah, it's like the sound. It was some. Um, okay. Yeah, it we was, know where you're headed yeah, with this yeah, direction. So, right. Because I'm a man that hearing is everything. Sound is everything for me. Okay. Uh, so if the sound, the sound wasn't right. Some people say, "Hey, the feel wasn't right for me." Hey, the sound was not right. And, okay. No, I okay, can relate okay. to that because the smell can not be right. That's so, exactly. Okay. I am that person. So right. I'm a person that your natural pheromones okay. that don't match with mine, okay. I'm ending it. Okay, that's fair. Immediately. That's and fair. I will not tell you. Because, okay. one, okay. not many people comprehend the concept of pheromones. Right. They don't understand that. Two, can you imagine trying to explain to someone, I just, I just can't get with your body odor. And they probably right. think they smell really good. Right. Yeah. So I can't, I but can't tell you can that. You, can you help somebody? No. In their, okay. So let's think about. It. So there's some I feel things, like you are attracted okay, to someone's let, pheromones, break this down. Let's break regardless this down. of the perfume or cologne or whatever it is that the act spray, whatever the heck you use okay. to smell good. Okay. I feel like some things can be corrected. Not your pheromones. And, or minimize, or you know. You think you you think that can okay. You think so that can be corrected? Maybe they're using the wrong body wash that's just not gelling with. Okay. So how am I supposed to have that conversation with someone? Exactly. Well, I mean, right. I mean, it, it can be awkward, but it's like, oh, you, know, you know, there's something about. I don't think your that's smell. a. I don't think that's you a. You can lie. I mean, I'm. I'm not. I should say. I lie. mean, I feel like that's a conversation you should have with someone who actually changed, changed like you knew prior, and they changed it up. Okay. But to have it with someone initially. And, and you're saying this is their natural. You don't change who yeah. they naturally are. Okay. No. Okay. I don't think I even liked anyone that much to want to change. Yes. Like to be like, Smell you need to big. change it up. Because I just don't understand how I can tell you, what are you using? Let's go down the list. You but know what I mean? But if, somebody, you, if you're dating someone and they use a perfume or a cologne that mm -hmm. impacts your allergies or whatever, or just makes you feel queasy or whatever, you yeah. should be able to voice that. No, you're right. But so it's like. But that's not, you don't think that's over time? Because initially I wouldn't think that it would be them. But I mean, you, you could blame me. I'm, I mean, somebody's gonna take offense if you just say, hey, "Yeah, you, you know, your natural aura, you know, smell, whatever." Right. It offends me. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. somebody somebody could take offense to that. Yeah. But if you, if you could be like, you know, ask them, what, you know, what are you using, you know? But for see, your see, oh, this is the difference between like an uh, actual cologne fragrance versus pheromones. A, right. They're pheromones are in yeah, right. they're in, like they're your this is yours. scent that your comes out. Right. Yes. But with so, no other chemicals but maybe combined. Something that you're eating. Something that you're eating could impact. So that. now I'm supposed to ask them their dietary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Just like, if you really want to give it them. No, no, okay, I'm with you. That's doing too much. Cause that's yeah, that's their natural I can't do that. Okay. I just feel like that's too invasive one. And two, like I as a person receiving that information would take it hard. You know, I, yeah. I would take it. I would take it a little. It would be a little difficult for me to actually adjust to receiving that type of information. Someone saying, "Hey, I don't know." Okay, what would you do if you're involved? <laughs> you're having relations with someone and then you're making oh, an, it's fair game. An, an annoying sound. Oh, it's fair game. If oh, you a, mean like do I stay or leave? No. Okay. I mean, oh. How would you correct it? Okay, you're involved with someone between the sheets, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the sound that they make is annoying, and it's kind of throwing your game off. What do you say? Do you say shut up or do you say? I, I would say shut up, but I would let them know. We would have a conversation. It was okay. like, hey, how about try this? Try this sound. <laughs> but, but this is their natural sound. I'm, I'm turning. I'm going to go to the soundboard. I'm going to be like, listen to this sound. What do you think of it? Oh, okay. How about that? What do you think? 
I think you should try that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you'll give them alternate sounds to try. I'm making this a commu- Al- alternate moan. That's what that, relationships yeah, about. Yeah. We have to communicate okay. our wants and needs. If you don't know, because because the thing about I feel like with intimacy and things like that, Mm-mm. people only think that they are the best according to the last person. But everybody likes something different. Okay. So yeah, you yeah, so the last person may thought you was the best, but the new person may think and, and like the last person work. May thought that that sound uh, was very attractive. Oh, and turns me on and makes right. me want more. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. You have to be willing to be open to yeah receiving some, some that criticism. Yeah. Okay. So okay, let's jump out of this bedroom. Let's jump into the <laughs> office. Yes. Yeah, so uh, let's jump out the bedroom. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, let's we keep all, it PG. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're talking about you know work spouse related items. And uh, there you go, the question Dan. of the day is, should you keep your personal life private mm. at work? Yes. So that's initially you say yes. Okay. Yes. And w- why do you say yes? I think, and when I say yes, I mean like you fake give them fake private stuff. Oh, okay. And oh, I okay. mean I like, like that. I know we, okay, go ahead. And Bring I mean down. like, you give them like something that's relatable private. So everyone can relate to a level of privacy, right? Yeah. So if anyone talking about a significant other or their family, we all can relate to that. But that's still private. Mm-hmm. But we're not giving exact details. Okay. We want to keep it in surface. So keeping surface private semi, because that's just enough to open up, be relatable, and then that's it. All right. So you're in a work setting. So what you're trying to do is build cohesion. You're trying mm-hmm. to build chemistry and a good bond, form a bond, a friendship, whatever. Sometimes, right. you know, sometimes you're just here to work. Right. But sometimes you are forming, you know, friendships and things like that. So honesty and truth is very important mm-hmm. in, yeah. a, in a friendship. So sometimes you feel compelled to share more so you can uh, have a more uh, meaningful relationship. Yes, and I only feel like you do more sharing with people you're actually, or the person you're actually closest with in okay. the office, not everyone. Because right. you're not going to get that close to everyone because you you're ultimately not. don't have that um, that amount of conversation with them in general. Right, and what happens, you know, and I think, you know, it's, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand, if you share too much information, everybody's going to be talking about, about your household and what's going on with you. Right. Uh, Especially if it's too like if it's too fluid with everyone in the office and they can talk about your personal business with another person, then it's right. not kind of private so or it's not selectively okay, so tailored to that person or that person that you're closest with in the office environment. Because I wouldn't assume that you're close with every single person. I would assume that you may be only close with one or two people. So everyone should know in depth, you know, what exactly your private business is. Right. In detail, in full details. Okay, so what, let's let's try to define a line and draw up right. a line. You what, tell me, what do you what are your answer? Do you think that you should keep your private life to yourself in the office environment, or like how do you how do you go about that? I mean, it's tricky. I mean, ultimately, yes, because okay. everybody, I believe, everybody can't handle the real David. Everybody can't handle. Oh, so the you true basically D'Angela you s- you cold switch. Oh, okay. Uh, that, it's a term. I think I'm using it correctly, okay. and it's basically be about like culturally appropriating for your audience yes you got to and okay in certain uh work environments okay and okay. depending on uh the type of culture your workplace is you know okay um uh, when i worked at fedex it was like a <laughs> warehouse type <laughs> driver sure was, experience yeah. when i was in my late teens and uh early 20s and I think, uh, you know, a little more loose talking and Mm -hmm. crazy talking and things like that. A little bit more uh, (laughs) honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, I didn't have no family. I have nothing, no really an image to protect. Because now when you're, you know, growing in your 30s, you're protecting your family's image too. Ah. Because I can share something and make you feel a certain way about the way I'm raising my kids, the way I talk Mm. to my wife, the way my wife talks to me. Yeah. And then... It's, it opens up people to judge and yeah. have an opinion about your life. That's true. So that's one thing why I don't like sharing too much, but I do like being authentic in my relationships. Okay. But, I can I can, I can totally understand that. But let's go to your term that you said. It's called uh, co- co-switching. Co-switching. Cultural uh, appropriating. Okay. So let, let's, let's open that, that door a little bit because okay. I think that's necessary. 
Mm-hmm. Do you do that? Yeah. Okay. I've done it. I've done it plenty of times. Um, I was recently deciding whether or not to do it and just continue <laughs> to carry on. <laughs> my like she's, like, she's like, come out of the closet and <laughs> show them me? Or yeah. Like, okay. So All I right. can show these mofos not to play right. with me? Like, okay. You know, because sometimes I feel like, I, I feel like more, like across the board in my office environments, uh-huh. I don't show anyone my real personality. Okay. So how much do you guard and like, okay. I guard a lot. Meaning like right. if you were, a friend, and you came to my work environment, you wouldn't recognize me. Okay. <laughs> like, m- most of my friends would not recognize me in my office environment because of how much I separate uh, okay. my it, social you, life okay. versus let Let's, let's, let's work get life. into the details. So, is your language different? My language? Yeah. Um, it's a little bit more precise. At it's work. Not, yeah, than it is with friends because it's relatable. So, they understand me. Like, so, you they, don't have they to personally break down know me. Okay. Okay, but even language in terms of profanity, uh, vulgar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It can okay. be. It can. It, oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, it's a little. It's looser with my social environment. Are than you it's more my aggressive? With my friends? Yeah. Probably. Okay. Because I'm a little bit more direct. Okay. So. Or assertive, or whatever you want to use, but yeah, because I feel like these these group of people know me, they know my personality, so I don't have to overly explain myself. I don't have to, to say something that's like, "Do you understand what I mean?" Because I mean this, you know. Because people who don't know you may take everything you say in a different direction okay, because so do they you, don't know you personally. Okay, so do you approach a job, the culture of a job, differently? Whether you're working with young people, older people, black people, white people, Hispanic people. Yes. Uh, okay. So it's all well, not, well, not office more so, or outdoor not or whatever. Nece- not necessarily with ethnic background. Okay. Until you show me otherwise. More so with age background. Because what I found is that when I go into an environment, you're not challenged by younger audience. You're usually only challenged by the older audience people in the office so every time i go to an environment i'm usually challenged of how much i know about the older um colleagues versus the younger colleagues the younger colleagues not so much concerned with my knowledge of the job or how much i know or my years of experience the older colleague colleagues are okay so for me, anyway, right. that's my right. experience. Yeah, because that goes down to kind of like size, getting sized up. Yeah. You know so okay. then I have to, then I, then I'm forced to do so because I won't be taken seriously. I won't take one. More importantly, I won't be taken with respect, and that's important to me. Respect needs to happen regardless of my age. You know how long I've so been at the job. So do you think you could share too much and you could lose the respect of your colleagues? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what what is something that okay let's let's talk about. Um, what about, I mean, what are your thoughts? <laughs> what do you think? Have you ever experienced that in the office environment? Or have it always been relatable? I think or what you I'm know willing to, to share, I'm willing to defend and mm-hmm. yeah. stand with. Okay. Um, and what, is that, what does that look like? Right. Um, let's say, let's, have you heard, ever heard me share anything in the office and you're like, oh, why did he say so much or... Why do you give so much detail? Because um, um, sometimes I even share things about, like, no. even at, at home or something like that, or something that between me and my kid or something like that. Mm. Sometimes no, I, I think I think our office environment now is very like across the board, mm-hmm. so I don't feel like too much is shared. Right. Then also, I guess I only share if I feel like the person really wants to know. Exactly. I yeah. think it's kind of like you reading your audience too. Yeah, yeah. Because I read my audience a lot first to determine whether or not I want to share it. And sometimes I still don't want to share certain things because I don't want them to be relying upon me. Like for like, any other time yeah. in the like office. For example, let's say when we were at the old office that we were in, mm-hmm. in DC, uh, I had a picture of I think my three sons, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I worked with other parents and stuff like that. I don't, you know, they talk about the kids, and I don't like inject my kids out there i just wait for them like to kind of set what it up what you mean like make you wait for them to initiate the conversation about kids yeah. because they saw your picture of your kids i'm mean, like they know they may know i have kids but mm-hmm. just because i have kids doesn't mean i'm going to talk about my kids share oh i see i see it. i see yeah. huh, i never thought about uh, it it's like, like uh, yeah it's like uh, somebody may be saying oh my kid got the flu this weekend and oh we gotta go get flu shots I'm not going to take that moment like, oh, yeah, me and my kids just got flu shots. Sometimes I just still know, oh, okay. Like, well, because you, cause often you can't relate. 
So yeah. I don't think it's necessarily you not willing to share. I just think but, you can't relate to it. I think if no, someone I, says something to your kid about football, you could relate. So you'd yeah, be like, oh, but, yeah, my kid's in the league, too. I coach. Yeah. You see, the, I feel like it's the right no, relatability I, I, factor. Sometimes I think people, <laughs> I don't know, I think parents are quick to invoke their kids in conversations. Because we like to talk about kids, but some people actually don't want to hear it. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I mm-hmm. never thought about yeah. it like that. I just, uh. when I think of someone not wanting to hear it, I just think of adults not wanting to hear the conversation in general. Gotcha. Like sometimes I don't want to talk to you at all. Like I don't want to share or you're overly sharing. Okay. You know, like I don't, I don't care to share with you <laughs> anything or you're overly sharing about something I'm not interested in. Okay. How do you deal with coworkers who overly share? I just keep listening. And then after like, I have like a, a grace period. You know, so if you are overly sharing or something that I'm not interested in talking about with you, I'll give you like a good seven minutes and be like, and I'll start to like appear busy. Okay. Like, so I have the like, oh, let me check my email. Oh, oh, one second. Okay. You know, like I'll do one of those type. Try to kind of like disengage. Yeah. Okay. So. Definitely. But I'll I'll appear again. What other tips do you have? I'll. (laughs) <laughs> dealing with people who so the so there's an article that actually Forbes wrote about like what and how to manage <laughs> you okay over there it's, it's the still smoke kicking. It's still kicking <laughs> right i did a yeah. good job then <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah that. so forbes actually and if you guys we can pull it up on the screen um shared uh tips on how to manage employees that overly share okay. and i found that I can relate to some of the the ways in which they do. And it was basically mean like, you know, make sure the conversation is short, you know, don't kind of like continue be to it. converse with them as they are speaking with you. Right. And I found that to be the best way and that's the best approach. Although you do have some people who actually um, will continue. Yeah. Even without you, like, I realize there are some people that will continue to talk even if you don't give them any feedback at all, which is so baffling to me. Because as soon as you stop giving me feedback, I'm removing myself yeah. from the conversation. True, and let me, let me jump in there. That is true because, to, <laughs> let me tell you this, if DeAndre asked me a question, let's say she asked me two questions back to back. I answered the first one, but I take like an extra <laughs> 15 seconds to, add, to answer the second one. She's like, okay, forget it. You're not listening to me. And, <laughs> and you would stop sharing Whatever what your thought was. Yeah. yeah. She's like that. Because you're not receiving, like, I'm not, you're not acknowledging that I have asked you a question. Even okay. if you're not, if you're thinking about it, even if you're trying to decide, oh, wait, well, maybe, wait, I have to think about that. Like, that's still feedback. Okay. Even if you don't have an answer right away. You know what I mean? So if you're not engaging with me with a question especially, and I, I'm typically looking for an answer. Okay. And you, I, you don't know when and how I need the answer. And it's not that I, I feel like I'm impatient, but I can be impatient when it comes to that because if you're not engaging with me, I don't feel the need to continue to engage with you, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I. Because yeah. then you deliberately ignore mm-hmm. me. You know, I'm yeah. taking it as a, you know, I'm taking it personal now because I'm like, do you not hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> if we're in active, the setting together, you know? Right. Yeah. So in sharing, like, I get annoyed. People who share good news and bad news. <laughs> I mean, because you have you people. Want, then that means you just don't care to converse well, with yeah, them. Yeah, it's not just no, it's not just that. It's like okay, if you get it, annoyed it, with both, then that means you you don't care to converse with no, this that's, individual. No, that's that's not, okay. Well, yeah, I work and uh, you ask my, you know, how how they doing this weekend, and they oh, you know, my mom's still sick, and you know, we had to take her di- to dialysis six times. It's you know over the weekend, but it's only <laughs> two days. But you know, uh, you know. And they just always got a pity party. So okay. you have people who share because they want you to join their pity party. They want you to be the oh, caterer for their pity party. You are people to something. who want you, they want to share all the bad. So you, not just for the attention, uh, but they want, you know, your pity. Then they want, and they want you like, you know, maybe they even want sometimes. a pity party. Yeah, basically. They, want, they, want, they want the pity party. But then you have these people who share good stuff and that could be annoying. Like, like, how can, uh, wh- like, where's the happy medium for you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's what it comes down to reading. Because I don't want a Debbie Downer, and granted, I don't, I don't want right. a person who brags. Yeah, you don't want a person who brags. But if someone is highlighting their achievements and their accolades, I do want to celebrate them. It will be celebratory because if they're sharing that with me, 
I would feel that I'm already close enough with them to share with me. Because cause sharing. And Unless they're being Because this is one that you hate to. Because also you can share and you can be a one-upper. A, a, a one-upper. Yes. You know how I don't like those type right. of people. Right. So explain. I do not like a one-upper. So a one-upper is this. And we may have friends, family, coworkers like this. A one-upper is a person as if you're sharing a story and they always have to say, oh, me too. Oh, I did that way back in the past. Oh, right. I know all about that. Right. Now, granted, there's a fine line between one-upping. Because yeah. if you have relative experiences, you may want to share. Right. But that's when I feel like you have to gauge your audience. Yeah. So when you're at work, sometimes it's, not, it's best not to disclose all of your talents at once. Because And then other times, depending on what it is, it can seem as if you are being disingenuous, too. Because if you say, oh, I remember I mentioned right. this to yeah. you. Why didn't you say anything about it? That can show that you're not being, you know, there's no genuity in it. Like right. you're not being genuine about the whole thing. Okay, how about sharing your vacation plans? Like, okay, I'm going to. Uh... <laughs> like, give me examples. People share their vacation plans. I'll say, yeah, I'm going to. And the, ne and the next question that follow ups is, where are you going? Okay. So people say, oh, I'm going to. Look. Okay. If you've been there, you can say, see how that's not a one-upping because okay, you have experienced being there. Okay, would you share your vacation experience with a, a well-known professional one-upper? That I know who one-ups me that all you the know, time? That you know if you say, oh, yeah, we just got back from Jamaica. Uh, me and my friends, we were there for four days. We did a cruise, and we went, and we did this other stuff. And then the on one-upper the would say. And, and you know the one-upper, oh, yeah, we went to Jamaica, yeah been there twice but yeah I'm, uh, I'm trying to just oh i would i wouldn't continue but i was like oh we enjoyed it we had a great time we knew some locals or they were local because i actually have a friend who's actually because Jamaican. People, okay so i would be like yeah so we actually got to see another part of it than the touristy side like maybe you just only had the touristy side but i had more of a manage yeah i guess that because if you wanted me i might i might want to one up you back yeah, and that could be people <laughs> that are just trying to uh, rain on your parade but you know you just have to be cognizant of the type of people that you and you gotta know how to shut it down too you yeah. have to be you have to also give them the opportunity to understand that, like, you need to shut this down because I'm sharing. And because I'm sharing and you didn't necessarily like the experience, you can just say, I didn't necessarily care. Because, I mean, I had someone do that to me similar but in the opposite direction. So they, I was telling them that I was going to uh, Tulum, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I told them about the cenotes, which is like the underground cave okay. uh, excursions. And they said to me that, like, do you know what they are? And I was like, oh, okay, trying to test yeah. it out. Yeah. Okay. I was like, I'm, but even if I didn't know, I'd be like, no, I'm not totally aware. And she was in the, and the individual was just like, well, um, there was basically like, they, they kept dead bodies under there and I didn't want to scare you or do anything like that. And I was like, well, you wouldn't know. Cause you didn't ask me, you know? So it was just more so like, well, why are you even bringing it up? If you didn't know, Okay. You know what I mean? Don't ask me the yeah, question. Don't, don't so. even in open the door if you don't even want to start the dialogue. Yeah. Like, just keep it to yourself then. So that's something that she could have kept to herself that she didn't necessarily enjoy. She was like, that just creeped me out or I just didn't like that. Or, you know, like, because of her whatever political views or views on sacrificial, whatever they did and however they explained the story to them, basically they would say that they kept dead bodies in the cenote. They were buried dead bodies. So, but... Cenotes are basically like uh, caves underground mm. and they fill with white water. So it was just like, but why did you feel the need to share that if you felt uncomfortable about it? Yeah. Ultimately, you yeah. know? Yeah. So have you ever like shared something and like a coworker or a colleague used it against you? All right. Um, that happens in my personal Cause, cause life one thing too. You don't share, you don't <laughs> share salary stuff. You don't share yeah. certain Promotion sometimes. Sometimes you don't even share promotions if you got a bonus on your check. Yeah, I'm not sharing. Yeah, I'm not right. sharing a promotion with like everyone. I'm like sharing with my close. Yeah, I mean, probably not even my close because then I don't want them to feel like they're entitled to a promotion too. Or you that know, can happen. Yeah, because you could. You're right. Because you could share something that happened to you positively on the job, then your coworker would be looking for the same thing, same treatment, yeah. even though they didn't get the same output. So, have you ever shared something with a coworker and it kind of backfired, or, or you know? Um, yeah. I have actually, and that's kind of when I like one of my first lessons of learning okay. that everyone in the office isn't your friend, or they're not going to be genuine or authentic towards you. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, okay, but it also taught me a lesson to like not share anything further with them that was personal. 
Right. So it was almost like it was a necessary evil in a sense. Like I needed it to happen to see exactly them for the true colors. Okay, like I, colors. like you know, like oh, okay, because I didn't know that they were loose lips, and you know, loose lips sink <laughs> ships. So, have you have you experienced sharing something with someone and you felt like, dang, you know, have you or have you called them out publicly? Because sometimes if someone shares something in front of a group of people that I said to them in private, I was like, well, I'll make a joke of it. I was like, well, that wasn't meant to be shared, but since we're here, I think you know, I, right? I think I have shared like something. About another coworker to another coworker. Oh, to see, so now you've been messy. But no, to see <laughs> if it would get back. Oh, okay. I've done that too. Yes, testing. I know what you mean. Yes, yes, yep. I'm but that's what you have to do. Right. Sometimes it's hard to do those things because it'll take you longer to hear hear about it. Right. Like, it'll take longer for it to become full mm-hmm. circle. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's yeah there's some uh, sharing tactics that I use just to kind of see. Who you could trust. So you test the waters first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I test the waters now, but when I did it before, I was much younger in my career and had no idea. Like I was basically a novice in understanding office politics. Mm-hmm. And I then recognized that although you're genuine, you cannot expect these people to be the same way towards you. They're still yeah. going to have this yeah. little like one up. And <laughs> they're going to one up you because they like, oh, she cute. She thinks she, oh, let me tell her business because she ain't perfect. You know, people will look for imperfections. Yeah. To allow others to notice or, or make other people aware. Like, she's not perfect, and let me show you how. X, Y, you know, like, yeah, it's sad, but it's what people do. Have you ever, like, shared, like, an idea at work and somebody used your idea? Oh, this has happened to me in my personal life. Oh, okay. I have, I have actually shared an idea with a manager, though. Okay. And they stole my idea or my, or more so my recommendation and presented it as if it was their own. And receive kudos, and I shut it down really quickly. Oh. I said, "Oh, the idea that we talked about the other day." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in front of the entire group of people, because okay. then, like, this is how I feel about in public environments. If you decide to disclose something publicly that we said in private and not give proper credit when credit yeah, is due, go I'm going. I'm going to go public too. Right. Yeah. yeah, but I'm not going to do it in a way where it's. You know, some people think that you can't, when they say it's not what you say and how you say it, it's really important to understand that lingo and right. how to go about those things because I feel like I can say whatever I want to say. It's just how you say it. That's so true. in public, I have said to them, hey, you expressed this in front of every. Oh, okay, I didn't know that you told everyone about our conversation. It's so many ways that I can, I can bring it home. Oh, I didn't know that you told everyone about this comment. I thought this was just an idea between us at the time. Yeah. How about? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I can see you doing. Because <laughs> you know that's my yeah. personality. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so how about sharing like business, like your personal business on social media, knowing that you have? I was uh, going to ask you that actually. Oh, okay. That was going to be my next question. Okay. I was going to ask you like, how do you feel about you know sharing your personal business? or your Facebook, or becoming right. Facebook or social media friends with any of your colleagues or your boss? Like, have you ever encountered that? Do you do you actually follow or connect with people who are at work on your social pages? Yeah, e- yeah. even my job in San Diego, my supervisor, we were, well, no, now not, not think about it, we didn't become friends on social media until, until after you I left. Thought, I left. That's, that's exactly what I do. Right. And I We're think, not friends until afterwards. Yeah, until afterwards. Uh, the things that I put on social social media, yeah, I stand by it, and I'm mm-hmm. very uh, cognizant of yeah. what you you, you posted. Yeah, these. especially mm-hmm. you know you know having a public position in, t- in terms of working for the government and things like that, and there's certain rules and trainings yeah. that they give you. Um, but if I w- would I be if I was in supervisor position, yeah, I probably do the same thing. I probably would not befriend. Uh, my oh yeah, I don't. I don't befriend now anyone at work that isn't my friend. So we're social media friends, right? But I wouldn't. I wouldn't social media friend anyone else at work. And I actually don't have any more social media friends. Yeah. At work. Yeah. Even though I know that they're. I won't on either. It. I will not. We will not be friends. I will ignore you. Hell, I will even lure you half of your LinkedIn profile. I don't want you seeing my experience half of the time. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, granted, this is public, you know, or if you're public, rather, because I could be private as well. But sometimes I don't want to be your friend on those things. I don't care when you have a work anniversary. I don't care when you get a new job because we're not that close. <laughs> we're friends 
you text me, hey, girl, I got a job. Hey, I have this opportunity. How are you doing? You know, that's fine. I don't need to be your friend. So what about, like, sharing and it could get you, like, in trouble in terms of getting you fired? Okay, so that, to me, is something that I feel like you're not CYA, meaning covering your ass. Okay. Okay. If you do not look in your, I am a handbook person. Right. Before I contact the company, before I send the email, I read that section of the handbook will govern any of the information because I don't want them to ever come back to me and say, oh, this is in the handbook. Right. And I didn't do my due diligence by looking in the handbook. Right. And that should not be the way that way because typically you sign off on a handbook that you read. But most people sign off on things that they do not read. Right. So I look in the handbook and see if there are any social media clauses or yeah, anything. Yeah, you have to in, look. That's so the point. So I don't, I don't, once I look at that, I already know. So typically when I'm talking to sometimes my colleagues and I say things, they look at me and like, you're standing with final because I read the handbook about this right. information in particular. Right. Because everybody's experience is different. But because I've had experiences across the board with different situations, I look at particular things such as PTO. You know, like time right. off and stuff like that and vacation and holiday leave. I look at sick, like if you bereavement or some sort or or, or liability or um, if you get sick on a job or you need like some type of assistance. So certain things I look at because it pertains to my life. So do you think it's fair to get fired for something that you shared in your personal life? If it's not in the clause in the in the in there in the handbook. No, I do so, not think it's so fair. You're saying it needs to be in the handbook. It needs to be in the handbook. You need to say something in there about social media because otherwise I am exercising my First Amendment, right? right? You know, like you can't, that's my personal situation. We're not friends. But because you're going on my profile, right. that's uh, that's discretionary. Yeah, I mean, I think because the social media is out, I think a lot of handbooks have been updated. Revised. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah. Uh, but it's up to the company to keep up with those things such as everything else too, though. It's just not social media. It's other things as well because things change. Yeah. What about, what What do they do? I mean, discrimination. That has yeah. happened for decades and nobody has updated their handbook. Sexism. You know, like things yeah. have happened across the board all the time. But now you don't want anyone to, you know, say anything bad about your company. You try to now say, don't go to social media. Because then that's also keeping them from having other audiences. Because now you can leave a review on the company Right. quickly on any website yeah and a lot of people are getting fired based off of social media mm -hmm. i mean a lot i mean not just marriages are ending a lot of careers <laughs> everything yeah. are ending because it's public yeah because of social media yeah uh, i remember yeah we had a uh, it used to be word of mouth now it's public so it makes it easy ac accessible to other people who wouldn't have quickly been able to know these things until they got the job or been on a job for a few yeah but yeah but even when you have that clause in there the employees need to be trained on how to use social media properly. I agree. Well, I think um, you need to outline. This is why you have HR specialists. You need to outline exactly how much and what they need to say or what they will say that will get them in trouble, especially when it pertains to the company or personal views that may be something that's not socially or ethnically right. right. Yeah. 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 When you I don't think I don't think that you should have because I also think that sometimes companies want to. Uh, not take accountability. Correct. So they don't want to necessarily have their dirty laundry aired or it'll t it'll help them take accountability and do better. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if I see like a, like a restaurant review on Yelp, if you make a bad review and someone or someone write a review about their customer service, they're going to make sure they handle it because yeah. they don't want other people having the same experience. Yeah. And so have it, you ever been called because of a re review that you uh, wrote on Yelp? Yeah. Yeah, I have to. But positive reviews too. Oh, I won't even write a review anymore. With social media, I have taken my phone out and started recording and tagged the oh. place. And someone uh, immediately emailed me and said, please come back. We are, you know, comping this bill for you on this day. I have, oh, so many times. All right. Okay. So, of course, we all know that there's power. And social media. Oh so. yeah, I like the. I like. It's, I think social media isn't any different, other than that it's faster and quicker, and it's also it's more public for others to see. So you can now be across. I can be in an, on the east coast and see something on the west coast before I even arrive. It wasn't before you had to go there and get the be in the environment to receive that. So okay, because it's Halloween. Like, oh. have you ever? Like, so you take pictures. I'm sure there's been times in your, uh, you know. So 
also with social okay. media, Let's talk about pictures. they have a close friend circle, and I encourage everyone to use it. Okay. So what the close friend circle does on Instagram in particular, I don't typically use Facebook that much, and I actually filter my Facebook. So what you can do is, um, quickly wrapping this up, is you can filter only the friends that you want to see certain things. Okay. So no one else will see it but you and those people that you select to be a part of that group. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So you can filter, and I and I love the idea that you can do that now because I feel like that's the way social media should always has have been because of your job. And the crazy thing, because people are sneaky, because they would mm-hmm. take a picture, they would show it to other coworkers, yep. and the stuff that you intended to share with yeah. just one colleague, everybody got a chance to see it. Right. Uh. So that's it's tricky. So sharing, you know, is difficult in the workplace. It is. Uh, you got to be very selective who you share. But then most importantly, even you, social media. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't even have to follow these people for right. them to look you up sometimes Correct. because they're now they're just being nosy. Right. Correct. So the question of the day is, should you keep your personal life private at work? Yes. And, and or, that, or and should you keep your social media? Like, how do you share your social media? Right. Or I know some people who go and look up people's names to see mm-hmm. what their yeah. social media look like. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we, we want to see the true D'Angelo. We don't want to see the filter. Why? D'Angelo. We're not friends. Why do you care that much? And sometimes people just don't think that, you know, they are who they say that they are. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't think people should care that much about your life if they're not your friends, that you cultivate a friendship on, at the workplace and outside. Like, you and I are friends outside, so you, I'll get invited to something that you have, like, with your children or something, but I don't think people should care that much. But in the event that they're nosy, mm-hmm. you know, I don't I don't know what to say about that. I think you should block them. But let us know, coworkers. We want to yes. know. Send your stories to us. Let us know. Yes. Um, at our email, we also can be reached, uh-huh. you know, at thyworkspouse at Gmail. That's T-H-Y-W-R-O-K-S-P-O-U-S-E at gmail.com. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And happy Halloween. Hey, I'm D'Angelo. And I'm David. And we're work spouses. Yep, you heard it right. But not the type that you're thinking of. We realize you spend more time with people at work than you do with the people you love most. We're going to discuss the interactions such as the games played at work, building the right, and avoiding the wrong relationships. D'Angelo and I, we're currently work spouses. Join us each week as we testify, help, and complain about work in corporate America. 